Hello, hi to new viewers and hello to my subscribers. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some big news, the closure of the Tavistock and Portman NHS gender identity services for children. Fantastic news. This decision is hugely significant and it's a win. It's a win for us, despite what all our um, ideological opponents are spinning it as a, a, a win for them, but it, it's actually a win for us. And this is why we have spent years collectively as a community trying to hold this NHS service to the same standards that all the other NHS services are held to, particularly the ones that relate to paediatric uh, mental health, because that's in essence what's going on here. I want to thank all of those women who have written to their MPs, taken the transgender trend pack into school, spoken to the head, um, signed a petition, donated to Sonia Appleby or uh, Kira Bell's um, crowdfunder, bought Heather Bunce Evans and Michelle Moore's uh, edited uh, collections of, of, of stories about the invention of the transgender child. All of you have contributed to this moment. And if you hadn't done what you did, that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. So you are important, you are significant in this movement, and I want to thank every single one of you. That said, there were obviously big milestones in the story relating specifically to this service. Now, this service was located at the Tavistock and Portman um, NHS Trust in London, and they had a satellite clinic up here in Leeds. Um, and they were basically being run on an affirmation model um, where they had been enthralled to certain charities, slightly fishy charities, uh, who insisted that all children who had declared a trans identity were actually um, the declared sex rather than the sex that was identified when they were first monitored in the womb of their mothers and cannot change. It was a real battle to get them to change course. I mean, this is a tanker going full steam ahead that we had to move with just a series of very small tugs. One of the case of Kira Bell and Mrs. A um, and Susan Evans, who famously got the judgment put into um, put on the statute that children were very unlikely to be able to consent to puberty blockers. Hello, Kylo, which, um, as we know, is true. Children can't consent to lifelong sterilization. They can't consent to uh, losing all sexual function and never having a satisfying sexual relationship with a partner ever in their life. Of course, children can't consent to that. They can't even get a tattoo. How could they possibly consent to that? So it was great to get that. That was one brick in the wall. As a result of that, uh, the NHS had to change their guidance on the website and they had to remove the insistence that puberty blockers were a reversible intervention because they had to recognise that they were the first step of a pathway of interventions that led irrevocably towards the medical abuse of children into um, castrated adults. Uh Uh, significantly, we also had a lady called Sonia Appleby, who tried everything she could at work to help safeguard the children who were in the care of the Tavistock and Portman GIDS, and she was blocked at every turn, and quite rightly, she took her employers to the Employment Tribunal and won her case. Again, she couldn't have done it without raising huge sums from our community, so again, Everyone that donated to that crowdfunder contributed to that victory. But Sonia Appleby obviously took on a huge load to defend children, and for that we are all very, very grateful. Mean Meanwhile, Stephanie Davis Arai, who has been absolutely painstaking in her work with Transgender Trend for years, for years, 
and uh, her work behind the scenes and appearing as a witness. Uh, it, 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 first of all, having to appeal that she had standing to appear as a witness and then being able to provide uh, witness evidence that helped with those cases. Amazing. Um, Heather Brent Heather Brunskill Evans and Michelle Moore uh, writing and editing books about the invention of this idea that some children can be trans, that some children should be lifted out of safeguarding frameworks because of their super special identities. Thank you. Uh, Michael Biggs, thank you for your research. Uh, very, very critical piece of research from you. Um, David Bell, another very great whistleblower from the Tavistock and Portman, we will always be grateful for your conscience and your hard work with children who very much needed your psychological skills. Thank you to every detransitioned or re-identifying woman who looked past their own personal pain in order to try to prevent further pain for more children. I hope that you are now in a place where you have got or you are getting the support and the treatment that you need in order to deal with the issues that drove you into this meat grinder in the first place and i wish you every healing on that journey with nic the national institute for clinical excellence having to launch some reviews that looked at the evidence uh, relating to the use of puberty blockers for children and they found guess what there is none there is in their words, very little evidence of very low quality and an unknown long term safety profile. Basically, what they were saying was that we don't have any good reason for doing this, but we have a lot of really good reasons to not do this. So let's not do this. And then as a result of that, um, the Care Quality Commission was called in to do um, an inspection of the GIDS at the Tavistock and Portman which they rated as inadequate. So that's the inspection body that is in charge of looking after all of our NHS and care settings to make sure that they are safe and that they are providing effective and evidence-based care. They found that they were inadequate. And that's why they've employed Dr. Hilary Cass to do a review of this entire service. And already Dr. Hilary Cass has made interim um, publications and this final um, intervention here. Um, she has already stated in her interim, interim statement that a fundamentally different service model is needed to provide these services to these children. So that was already a warning shot across the bows for the GIDS. But I don't think any of us really hoped that it, anything would happen until her final report was published. So to get the news this week that they have uh, forged ahead and told the service that they must close by the spring of 2023. Well, it's fantastic news. It's fantastic news. So what is going up in its place? Well, the big difference is that rather than have one national service for these children and adolescents, what we are now going to have is a whole bunch of regional services, starting with two regional services, one in London and one in the northwest, shared between Manchester and Liverpool. They don't know where the site will be just yet. And then gradually building up into possibly as many as eight um, separate regional services. Now, the big difference um, from my perspective as someone that worked in health is that when you have a national service, it's, uh, it's commissioned directly by NHS England. So the NHS England board basically make a decision that this is an important service and we're going to fund it to the tune of however many million pounds per year. That funding goes out before funding is divvied out for all your local areas. When a service is commissioned as a regional service, it comes out of the divvied up funding that goes to each area. So instead of being told this service is so important, it must be prioritised ahead of um, cancer care, ahead of uh, maternity care, uh, ahead of everything else, it's now going to have to fight against all the other services in its local area, all of which have a very good evidence base and a much more, a much better understood 
long-term safety profile. <laughs> so for instance, in terms of pediatric healthcare, you're going to have to decide between hmm, this treatment, which we know, and we have evidence going back 30 years that this is a good treatment for these kids versus this treatment that there's no good evidence for. And we don't even know how many of these kids are going to end up suing us. Probably back away from the interventions that they could sue us over then. So I think that the biggest impact is going to be that the commissioners of these services are going to be under pressure from the other services to defend their choices. And we can all actually get involved in that process through uh, local mechanisms, um, oh, which are boring and I'm not gonna go into them now, but maybe I'll do a video about them in the future. But certainly this, there is going to be space for activism in your local area um, to highlight issues with your local services. So that's good. That's an opportunity for us to put our case. It is much harder for our opponents to ideologically capture every regional service than it was to ideologically capture one commissioning body at NHS England who then made a decree that everybody else had to go along with. And remember that once parents were coming back with a decree from the Tavistock and Portman, it was very difficult for local safeguarders, teachers, head teachers to actually say, hang on a minute, is this really in the child's best interests? Because the parents are coming saying, it's not just me, this entire NHS trust says that it's the right thing to do. So I hope that all that is going to change. The other thing that I hope is going to change is that I really hope these children are offered decent treatment apart from puberty blockers. These children are crying out for intervention. It is very, very difficult out there for, for children with mental health problems who are not um, a risk to life, to themselves or to others, um, because basically there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing until you get, until you get to that kind of um, level of severity. There's, there's really very little available locally. So may, maybe there are some third sector charities working in the area, I don't know. But it's very, very, very hard times for paediatric mental health in general. And um, certainly the children that are neurodivergent, the children who are on waiting lists for assessments for autism and ADHD, who may be languishing on waiting lists for years. It's not unusual to wait for two, four years for those assessments. Um, those children are all going to need help. And if we can catch them before they are captured by this cult, then that's all to the good. But we do have to make sure that we give them something else to go on, some other way of dealing with the huge amount of distress that they are feeling. And I do hope that Dr. Hilary Cass will be explicit in her instructions that the regional centres must provide. What she said in her interim report was that the services should be equivalent to other local services in paediatric health. So yeah, it should be fair and all children that need help should be able to access that help. What are the other outcomes? Well, one of them I can think of is that a lot of parents saw the waiting lists at the Tavistock and Portman, which were, which were really long, I mean, you know, years, as they are in a lot of areas of the NHS at the moment. The NHS is in crisis. And a lot of those parents decided to just go private, just pay for one of these people who also works at the Tavistock and Portman to uh, write a letter, fish out puberty blockers. None of them were really doing any kind of in-depth work with these kids, um, but they were certainly prepared to take £300 an appointment to write a letter. Um, and a lot of the parents um, who were medically abusing their children were doing it under the, under the supervision of so-called medical professionals. I would like to see those medical professionals really, really tightened up on now by their professional associations, by government, if necessary, by the CQC. What are you doing? Dishing out these unevidenced and, you know, we don't know how safe they are medications to kids. That's not okay. It is not okay for prescribers based overseas to prescribe something in this country that is then dished out to children. Um, children's uh, health is too important. And uh, messing around with hormones is incredibly dangerous. You know, 
it's a whole medical specialty and it's unreasonable to expect that uh, children should be able to access that service except from endo endocrinologists. You know, we either need a lot more endocrinologists or we need to stop issuing hormones to children. And yes, puberty blockers are hormones. It is a hormonal treatment. It's not cross-sex hormones. It's a hormone which affects the, um, the sex hormones. So it's still a hormone <laughs> and should still be administered by an endocrinologist. Our opponents are spinning like crazy. Of course they are. Their business model is going up in smoke. So we have mermaids saying, yeah, but it's a good thing because this, and because that. No, it isn't. It isn't a good thing for you. And it is the death knell for your organization. And I hope that ultimately many of you will end up in prison for the crimes that you have committed against children, um, along with some of the parents who've medically abused their children. Some of them didn't know any better and were going along with expert opinion, but some of them have been activists for this movement or have monetized their children's health, um, which absolutely beggars belief absolutely beggars belief these people are dangerous finally i want to say to every parent who said no to their child when their child said i think i'm actually a boy or i think i'm actually a girl every parent that said clearly you're not look in your knickers look in your pants what have you got there you know that a male is this and a female is that you are this one, you are that one. It doesn't change, it will never change. Yes, you can cut your hair short. Yes, you can wear trousers, who cares? But you're female and you always will be. And the vice versa for young boys. You can like pink, you can wave a fairy wand around, you can wear wings, you can wear princess dresses, but you are a boy. Just because you like to have your hair curled and done up in pigtails doesn't mean that you're not a boy. You can wear nail varnish, although not for school because it's against the uniform code, but you are not a girl. You're a boy and you always will be. So for every parent that's held the line in their own home, that's held the line in their own family, thank you on behalf of your children. Thank you. One day, your child will look back on this and will thank you for what you did to save them from this. I just think of it as a meat grinder, honestly, where people are just feeding their children in at one end and looking at gender sausages coming out the other end. It's terrifying to me what people will do to their own children. Um, so thank you to every single parent who has safeguarded their own child from this gender cult. So thanks very much. Video about the NCS is still in production. My God, these things take time. They take so much longer than they do in my head. Um, but that is that is on its way out. I just wanted to put this out quickly in the meantime. You'll see me this weekend at Speaker's Corner in London and next week back to usual service. Do subscribe, share the love, like, comment, join the conversation. I always appreciate that. If you want to pop a couple of quid in my um, PayPal to help me pay for my train ticket to London, that is fantastic and I am ever so grateful. So that's it for another video. Great to celebrate, but it's dreadful to think of the number of children harmed by this ideology, by this institution, by part of our own NHS and the children that will continue to be harmed until the spring, let's not forget. With that in mind, we celebrate, but it's with a bitter taste in our mouths. Until the next time, take care. See you soon.